Today on Uncommonly Good MTG, we're playing Rotation Proof Dinosaur Gruel. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a it's a dinosaur deck. It's a gruel deck. We've seen it a hundred times ago. What makes this thing special? It is rotation proof, which means that if you get it now, you'll be able to play it two weeks from now. You'll have a great deck, and it's going to hold up, and it'll be solid. If that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I'm your host, your master of ceremonies on this journey towards fun and enlightenment, Dr. Yukon Socket. Yes, thank you. Film for our live studio audience. Thank you so much, Yukon Socket. Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to you a deck I found over on the Aether Hub, hosted by Tommy, called Rotation Proof Dinos. Yeah, the big thing nowadays is trying to get rotation proof decks. In the olden days, I used to try to play, as they say, well, rotation's coming up, let's play all those cards we'll never be able to play again. In which case, I'd be playing Tox Roll all the time, or Burn Down the House, or something like that. But uh, you know what? People didn't like those decks, and so I'm playing rotation-proof decks. I'm playing the decks now that you'll be able to play two weeks from now. In standard, that is. You can always play those other things in historic if you want to, but standard's where it's at, baby, because trust me, you want stuff to go away. Are you tired of playing against, you know, mono-white humans or mono-white soldiers? I am. I'm looking forward to the back of that bro of that deck being broken. Will there be other things to replace it? Probably. It always is. But, uh, you know, it'll be different. And that's what's important. So what we're doing here is we're taking a look at a rotation-proof version that Tommy's put up. And one thing about Tommy is he puts out, he puts a lot of effort into his decks. You can go to his, follow the link in this description over to his, uh, his deck list. And you can see he's got a whole thing in his description talking about like where he sourced it from and what his strategies are and why the choices he's made. That dude's put some effort into it. I appreciate that. I appreciate that big time. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to play this. We're going to take a look at the cards in this deck. We'll talk a little bit of how the deck should work, and then we'll go out and we'll crush some hopes and dreams. All right, so what are we going to take a look at here? We got uh, a minimum of two points of damage to a target creature. Could be much bigger if you got dinosaurs out. This one does damage equal to the power of a target creature that you control to a creature or planeswalker you don't. So we got creature kill, creature kill, mana ramp, mana ramp, creature with uh, creature kill, hopefully, and haste. This is super mana ramp, potentially repeating. This guy is a 6-6 six, six for three, but uh, he's got to have other dinosaurs out, otherwise he becomes stunned. Uh, mana ramp, warded up, 5-3 dinosaur. This guy is uh, flying for strike 5-5, five, five, and potentially if you exile a land, you get a 3-1 dinosaur. Otherwise, you get a treasure token. So this guy, he's like the dude he provides. Uh, we got Trumpeting Carnosaur, who could be a 3 points of damage to target creature or planeswalker, or it could be a 7-6 to trample with Discover 5. That means anything to, from this point over, you could potentially get back out of him coming into play. And Voltborn Tyrant, one of my favorite cards from recent sets. Because he's got so much value. He's a 6-6 six, six trample uh, when he comes into play. Or another creature with a power of 4 or greater, which is pretty much half your deck. Uh, you gain 3 life and you draw a card. When he dies, if he's not a token, he comes back as a token as himself. So therefore, he can afford to be killed once and then be himself all over again. Except for he's a token, so therefore he will get killed the second time. Alright, so value, 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 corn. That's what that dude is. What do we got over here? We got a card you'll declare as, as a dra or not dragon, dinosaur. This one becomes a dinosaur man land. And we got a few dual lands and a few regular lands right there. That's it. So what are we going to do? We're going to hit the board running. We're going to try to ramp way up into, di into dinosaurs early. And then hopefully get our way into the large dudes, which will be more than what our opponents can handle. And uh, that's it. We'll just totally kill them in one way or the other. If that sounds good to you, then hold on to your pants. 
So before we go out and do our damage, let's do as we do every night. Let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life. Hands together. Dear Black King Toxrel, who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart, please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies, see them driven before us, and to hear the lamentations of the women. All right, we are playing against Colonel Angus. Colonel Angus's Tennessee Fried Chicken. Keep. You are way over in a weird position there, my friend. I wonder how they order these by default. It seemed like I always thought it was by mana cost. And yet, it almost seemed like almost it was by color and then mana cost. I was this uh, t two or the greatest amount of dinosaurs that you control, so I could kill the Forsaken Miner. But why would I care? You sorcerer, my friend. You certainly are. Uh, not dragon, dinosaur. We got four. Let's go for Hulking Raptor. I'm surprised he doesn't have a direct creature kill. I don't think he's got the ward to go after it. So he can't block. Get our boy out, discover five, lay it down. Come on, something good. No, not stupid. It's called Lore Keeper. Jeez, people. That was the worst discover I've ever seen. I already got a guy you can shoot. Nope, you don't have it on you, apparently. Oh, there you go. Good for you. Uh, target dinosaur controls deal. Yeah, let's just do that. Done. All right, hammer skull it up. And let's send them in. All right, it's down to seven. We got one blocker. We got 10 life. We're doing all right. We got the ability to chomp somebody. If we lose it, it's not that big of a deal. That touch. All right, he's got a lot of blockers in place. Good for him. All right, we lose on the chomp. He's thinking. Colonel Angus and his his brilliant strategic mind they learned in the Tennessee Army. Let's go give one of those guys the run through. All right, let's just eat some people at this point. Let's just do it. Oh, we could do it after the fact, huh? Let's just go chew this up now then. Gone. And there we go. That was his whole defense right there. Victory. All right, we're playing against Dwayne Kizzizzizzizz. Whoever Dwayne, Dwayne is, keep.
Alright, we got a couple of dinosaur dudes that aren't dinosaurs themselves. I want this to be a dinosaur, which means I'm not gonna be able to get out the paleontologist. What are you doing, Dwayne? There you go. All right, there she is. I've tipped my hand. He knows what I'm playing now. It's called Dinosaurs. All right, Hammer Skull. What do I got? One, two, three, four. I'll have five. I got to wait till I get to seven before I can play the Tyrants. Those guys are nasty, but I gotta worry about these first strike lifelink guys. This is not first strike death touch. All right, cool. We'll pull this one out as dinosaur, which gets us into a bone hard. That allows us to attack for six. Plus, we got a guy in the sky with first strike that can block his angel, which is a glorious, glorious thing. Ooh, chomp, chomp. Who do I want to kill here? I'm not used to seeing that particular thing. Let's just kill. Yeah, all to pay. I got two right. There we go. Now we'll leave that. Down to three. All right. It's doing really good. We're still 20. Don't wipe the board. That would be extraordinarily bad. Nope. He wiped it in the best way possible by just giving up. Victory! All right, we are playing against water bottles. Water bottles. Keep. What are we getting here? Ooh, I just didn't. I saw the land and thought that was good. But all I could do is hard hitting question off of a lore keeper. Hopefully, it'll draw something good. All right, there you go. There's my person. I'm ready to come kick your butt now. I certainly hope there's some better top top deck draws here, huh? It would take me both of this mana to be able to kill that one that one little Swiss here right there. Ooh, this is horrible. Should I just do it? There we go. I mean, this ridge line is it, but come on. I think my deck has decided to screw me over. You gonna waste a kill on uh, on the Lord Keeper there? No, I didn't think so. All right, uh, let's do it. Get it all slow. We can put her out. There's our hammer skull. Hammer skull do good on defense. Of course, that thing's going to blow up like crazy, but I'll be able to throw it in a way. That cost us four. We can do it. Look, man, you're gonna have to get your defense up, otherwise you're just it's gonna die. And I don't think you got the creatures. Neither do I. Both of us just racing to whatever we can get there. There we go. 
Uh, dinosaur. I can pay the two. Little it's a quint doing his duty. Don't think you can just shoot it and finish this off. It's still gonna happen. There we go. Not sure how that was gonna pan out. That's the big problem, is that now I got I got uh, a stunned hammer skull. Alright, we win. That was good. Touchdown, Lava Bears. Alright, we're playing against Death Watcher. Uh fine. Oh, I see what we're playing. Hopefully, yeah, I was hoping we pick up another land, but we are not doing that. We need to land land so we can do things like the ch like the chomp right there. No blocks. I'm down to four. That's fantastic. I could have built the Hulking Raptor, but we'll just hold these two together right now. I don't think I can live through this. Yeah. I'll just pump again. Really? He didn't do that. That's crazy. No attacks. We gotta play defense. These are our best chances. That guy does not have haste. Alright, so we got three I gotta put out. That's it. That's all I can do. All I have to do is just play something. All right, I can chomp now. I can put a guy out. It's probably best to put a dude out right there. We're just going to stay with as many big fat guys as we got. No attacks. Oh, sweet googly. This is getting close. Next turn, it's hard hitting question and chomp. You can't make it through my, my sources here. They're too big. What's he got? Uh, let's just do that. All right, one down. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should probably just waste it. And here goes the other. All right, let's just send in these two. All right, we're down to seven. We got lethal next turn. We can block pretty decently. Yeah, I think we got it. And we win. Oh, I can't believe we pulled that one off. 
Winner, winner, victory dinner. All right, we are playing against Learbag. Lear, Lear, Learbag. All right, so Gwyn has a three, which means I'd be a three, I'd be immediate up to five, which means I could play the Bone Horde. Can't do anything less than three at this moment. I tell you what, let's just change it up. Let's go for Hammer Skulls. Does he have ossification on him? More than likely. All right, so Gwyn is the better choice. You can't counter anything. You have no mana available. And no attacks. Bone Horde's going to do great. We just gotta, hopefully he won't be able to take our guys out. I'm glad I have the Hammer Skull out there. Just ward, ward one times two. That's nasty. All right, so I could just kill that little dude off right now. I don't have to worry about it. How much is going to cost me? An additional three. When it can only be used for creatures, it's going to have to go like this. Then I can use Gwyner to put out the Paleontologist. All right, so we've only got three mana. What do you do? You're so I got four mana. That's it. So four, which means I could pay the three to take out the Sky Strike Officer. What else do I have? I got one, two, three. I got six. Which means I can get out the trumping Carnosaur. I really want to do. I got first strike, baby. You got a single white. There's always potential. My Bowman Horde over here is blowing smoke rings. What are you looking at all those guys for? You're just gonna make use of his last ability, milk that cow, that dead cow.
All right, can I do some triumphant chumps? Not really. Nothing worth going after there. What is it trying to tell me I can do here? I can do one, two, three. Parting question is a single one. It's got to be a creature. Let's put up Punish's Hammer Skull. That'll untap Gwyneth again. I don't necessarily want to do this again, so we're cool. Let's go ahead and send some boys in, though. All right, that's 16. Yeah, just start chumping, huh? All right, so there's our creature removal. These guys are going to take an extra two... I don't have a whole lot of regular lands. You can throw in your other guys, make them big. I'll have to sacrifice some skin. Ooh, I can't believe Gwen is so good with massive creatures. All right, so I can put this guy down, start shooting people up, pay the extra two. No, I can't. I can take out a little boy there. Oh, what I got? I still got three, four, five. Hopefully he doesn't have a board wipe. That would be extraordinarily bad. All right, let's give some. Let's just give some stuff up. This could pull back. Yeah, we did. Seven attackers. We're leaving what back? One, two. Last out some chumps. Look, man, you're going to hurt so badly when this is done. I've only got one flying guy. I got Trample. Not just one guy, though. So it looks like you can take around 11 if you just dodge the Trampler. And you lost. You had three guys in reserve, man. <laughs> winner, winner, victory dinner. All right, so here we are with rotation proof dinos. Uh, you know, I knew dinosaurs was going to do well. The deck is pretty much all Ixalan dinosaurs. They could do a fantastic job. They were really in this last few weeks making use of some, some great stuff from the... Uh, 
from pre-locations such as the um oh i don't remember what it's called anymore it's the the green one that comes out and puts an extra plus one plus one counter and then when you have a guy that's seven or more you get a guy for free that one was slamming in big dudes really early so um but that one's gonna be gone so we're not playing with that anymore and so yeah right here we're just playing with pretty much true ixalan dinosaurs supplemented with some of the new stuff from uh from the vault what else is there anything else here just not Ixalan. yeah harding question appears to be new gaia i'm surprised that gwenna is still you know still around she seems so old but yeah this is this is definitely probably one of the oldest sets of brothers war that's going to be living past rotation but that we're playing it's big time Ixalan dinosaur so it's it's good it's tribal it's awesome and it's holding it together it's nice to have a deck that we're used to that we can just play and it's good to go. All right, so let's just see who was the MVP. Who's the MVP of this deck? You know who was helping? It's really, I'm going to call it. It's Gwenna, really. I was going to say it was Isaquinth. Isaquinth was pulling off some major shots there. Isaquinth has the potential to be really good for its value. But Gwenna, with the ability to untap, I was able to use it to pay for multiple things. You could get that two mana out against creatures like constantly. So yeah, if you're looking to put out big creatures, Gwenna is just a machine. And then she keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger itself. Man, that was incredible. So I'm going to give it to Gwenna. Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia. Gaia. You're my MVP for today. Congratulations. All right, was this deck competitive? I was playing it at the gold rate. I got a 62%. Yeah, this thing is competitive. It's worth playing. You know, when you look at the top tier list, it's uh, dinos are not in like the top 10 at all. But yet, it's whenever you play against it, you know you're going to get ripped apart. You got to have something that's aggro. Uh, you got to have something that's just going to kill creatures like crazy, potentially. Um, yeah, that's what you got to do because you can't let any of these dinosaurs live. They're just too powerful. None of them have trampling or, or flying, or you got the trumpeting carnosaur, there's discover. Uh, the Pugnacious Hammer Skull is way too cheap. Yeah, the, its deck has just a lot going for it. I kind of feel bad for Gruul because basically Dinos have taken it over. That Gruul Haste deck I was playing is probably more my speed because I enjoy eh, more of the mid-range characters that uh, that have haste to them and a little bit of creature. You don't need all of this meat. It's cool. It's very, whatever it is, Timmy or something like that. Yeah, I mean, sure, you're coming out with these big dudes. It's fun to Godzilla people to the face, but you don't need it. I mean, really, your Hammer Skull is a great money ball card just because of the immense amount of power you get. Um, I'm just not sure. You got to play with extra dinos to make him work. And But it's a Quint and the him together. These two, their value is incredible. So I would say if you're looking for some good gruel money, money ball type of cards, it's a Quint and Pugnacious is good. These guys are, are like, they're just showboats, but... You know, if you can play them, play them. A Hulking Raptor is also a great card that is Moneyball. 5-3 five, five, for 4 and gives you 2 additional mana. And that is and Ward. That's fantastic. I might even cap it there. And then just do some other cool stuff with some dudes that are cheap. Haste, if you can get it. All right, uh, let's see. So we said it was competitive. Let's talk about, was this deck fun? Yes, it's a fun deck. Because early on, you got so many good things going on at one. You know, it's got a curve to it. It's a, a mid-range kind of situation. But still, at the beginning, you got things you could do. I mean, I'm attacking people with the Lore Keeper. It's stupid. But like number two, you're getting out. Potentially, you're able to, to, to jump some people for two. Triumph and Chomp does a minimum of two. So you got stuff you're doing in early game. And that is a lot, in my opinion. So I think this is a fun deck. I like the fact that it's got stuff that happens er, you know, early, mid, and late game. It's a contender all the way across. Some people could be faster than you. This deck definitely does better if it's on play rather than on the draw. But uh, still, it's a fun deck to play. Lastly, was it interesting? N no. I mean, the interesting part of this deck is because it is rotation-proof. We've seen dinosaurs. I've stayed away from it for the most part just because after the first day of playing Dinosaur and Ixalan... It was like, yeah, that deck's been done. Maybe I pulled it out a couple of times when there's something cool we can do. Um, but, you know, it's there's just so, so many variations you can play on. They're pretty much exactly the same. So it's not a terribly interesting deck. As you can see, it's just Ixlon card, Ixlon, Ixlon, Ixlon card. The best one coming in is Vault Barn Tyrant just because he's got so much value to him. 
So much value. Seven is our hard thing to play, but this deck gets there. And because you got Gwynna, you got the Paleontologist, you got these other mana sources, it is smart to nail those dudes because it keeps people from getting to these cards. We're not playing. Let's just take a look at our, what we got there. 24. It's not a tremendous amount of lands. You know, it's, it's, a dec it's the decent amount. It's the default amount. So the extra ramp comes from our dinosaur lovers right there. And if you can nail those guys by nailing them when they come out, it definitely holds this deck back. Because the Hulking Raptor will jump you up into that area. So he's the last little, he's both a dinosaur, a threat, and a, a mana ramp at the same time. Which is why he's got so much great value to him. Anyways, it's a great deck, but it's a little played out. And we're going to see it for at least, at least another, what, two years at this point? Because it's mostly Ixalan. I mean... What isn't in here that's Ixalan? I forget again. It was Gwynna. Gwynna is the one card you're not going to see. And who cares? There'll be something else to fill Gwynna's position. Yeah, this is going to be a, a great deck that'll be around. People will be playing it for another two more years. All right, so there you go. Let's add that up. Was this deck competitive? Yeah. Was this deck fun? Yes. Was it interesting? Nah, not really. It was still good. But I'm going to give this deck... I mean, it's, it's a straight A deck because it's rotation proof. Therefore, we can play it in two weeks from now we'll still be able to play this deck as it is and if there's any dinosaurs which i don't think there are in bloomboro we could we could put them right in we got any other non-dinosaur cards that can help dinosaurs get out man then it could definitely find its way into this deck and you'd be happy 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 all right so that's it it's a straight a deck and if you decide to play with it i hope that you have as much fun with it as i did all right that's all for now if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. See you next time, Space Cowboys. Later.